When you said no to $30 million, did people think you were crazy? You guys have famously turned down $30 million <laughs> offer to buy your business. Right. It's the largest offer that's ever been turned down on Shark Tank. The Kang sisters walked away from all that cash. Why did you do that? Or did they? Da Woon, Arum, and Su Kang made international headlines on some of the most respected platforms in the world based on a false narrative. All of them claiming that the sisters turned down a $30 million offer from everyone's favorite billionaire, Mark Cuban. But what really happened? During season six of Shark Tank USA, the sisters got the opportunity to pitch their dating app. Coffee meets bagel. <laughs> Single women are tired of signing up for dating websites only to get hit on by creepy strangers bombarding them with disgusting messages. <laughs> Kevin! <laughs> and that is why women love Coffee Meets Bagel. So sharks, who is going to be our perfect match? They went in seeking $500,000 for 5% of their company, which means they valued their company at $10 million. Although they did a great job with their pitch, things started to fall apart once the sharks started asking questions. And how many users? So right now we have several hundred thousand users. Our business really ramped up. Is it 200,000 or is 700,000? So it's between one and five. One and five. Well, just what? tell us what it well, is. You want an investment, you can't not tell us. They refused to give the exact amount of users, which did not sit well with the sharks. Well, you got to share that. Are you kidding? I think that's a good range. It gives you a good idea. No, it doesn't. No, but why won't you give us the actual number? We're actually not sharing the exact user number right now for okay, competitive... Okay, I'm out. So Mark went out immediately. Not only were they being secretive with the number of users they had, they were also losing a ton of money at the time and taking out huge salaries for themselves. What's your profit? So right now, our profit is negative. How much will you lose this year? We'll lose a million dollars. You'll lose a million dollars on a million it, dollars in sales this year. Yes, because we had to spend a lot of money, mostly on salaries. Do you guys take a salary today? Right now, we take $100,000 salary uh, each, each. Each? Sorry, wow. you take 100 So $300,000 you're drawing out of the business right now. A year, yes, a year. A year. But that is still a significant pay cut for all of us, whatever we were making prior. <laughs> Because they were each taking a six-figure salary despite the company losing money and being secretive about crucial information about the business, no shark wanted to take on the huge risk, and so they didn't receive any offers. But Mark had one more question for them. If I offered you $30 million for the company, would you take it? No. And this is the moment that sparked all of those headlines. Even though, as many of you pointed out, it wasn't a real offer because Mark asked if. However, Mark has made serious offers starting with if in the past. What if I offered you $1.25 million for your company plus a three-year employment agreement at 100 k per year and I'll pay you a percentage of the profits once we hit certain hurdles that we agreed to? But in an interview after the show aired, Mark made sure to make it very clear that this was not a serious offer. What happens when you get turned down? Coffee meets bagel, $30 million no, offer. No, that was not, no, they, that, oh, that no, a, no, that no, a big no, offer. no, no, I sat there and I said, hypothetically speaking, right, if I offered you $30 million, right, would you take it? And then they went out and started doing interviews and telling everybody Mark Cuban offered them $30 million and we turned them down. But that didn't stop the Kang sisters from taking full advantage of the hype surrounding the hypothetical offer. They did interview after interview, leaning into the false narrative that they turned down $30 million from Mark Cuban. And whether you believe it was right or wrong, it worked. Coffee Meets Bagel saw their user base grow exponentially after the show aired. Even without the Shark Tank money, just being on the show last Friday was a big boost. Coffee Meets Bagel reports a big surge in signups for their app. Even though they initially didn't even want to go on the show because they felt like they were too big for Shark Tank. At first we said no, like we are too big, we're, I don't think we're the right size, I don't think we're going to pitch. Most of the companies that get on Shark Tank are kind of mom and pop. Uh, companies that usually don't have access to good access to capital and it's typically like oh you know I want to sell 30% of my company for like $30,000. Which seemed to display a degree of arrogance especially since the year before appearing they had sales of $87,000 and many of the companies that had already appeared on Shark Tank were much bigger than Coffee Meets Bagel. 
As a matter of fact, they didn't even bother to apply to be on the show. Every year, Shark Tank holds auditions to recruit businesses to pitch to the sharks, and every year thousands of entrepreneurs apply for the golden opportunity. However, this was not the case for the Kang sisters. We were actually approached by the studio to pitch on Shark Tank. There was another classmate of Aram from Harvard Business School who actually got on the show. When we spoke to him, he was like, oh my God, you cannot say no to this opportunity because the PR opportunity that you have is like equivalent to like $2 million. And so we actually went back and, and said, okay, actually we want to get on. <laughs> Interesting. So it was only after a friend highlighted the massive exposure they would gain from appearing on the show that they decided to go through with it. This raises the question, did they actually want a deal? Or were they there simply for the publicity? During that same interview with Startup Grind, an audience member asked a very good question, which seemed to trip up Dewoon. If he offered you a higher valuation, why don't you counter offer maybe 10 million for 30%? You have him on board and he keeps the same valuation. Uh, yeah, we could have. I, um, we were not, it doesn't matter what value, we weren't going to sell the company at the end but of the day. But if you give you some piece of the pie, you just keep the same valuation because you obviously tripled your valuation. And this is where Dewoon adds some interesting and new information that we had never heard before. So actually, this, this part didn't air in the show, but he actually had a conflict of interest um, so that he couldn't invest in dating company anyway. Oh. Yeah. If this is true, it means they were quite aware Mark did not make them a real offer, but decided to run with the narrative anyway because it made for a better story. According to a post on Quora made by Mark himself, they knew it was a hypothetical offer, but decided to intentionally misrepresent what happened to get more media attention. They believed that Coffee Meets Bagel had the potential to be as big as Match.com, which had annual sales of over $800 million at the time and they were willing to do whatever they needed to do to scale to that level. They even suggested that people online were sexist towards them. You were called a lot of nasty names for turning down $30 million. The being called greedy, gold digger, all these things, like, would we have been called those names if we were not women? I think if we were men, we probably would have been called bold, mm -hmm. uh, you know, visionary for and, and brave for rejecting that $30 million, but of course we weren't called that. Whether you like their strategy or not, it was very effective. While they have yet to catch the Match Group, which owns the largest portfolio of online dating services, including Tinder and Hinge, Coffee Meets Bagel is among the top dating apps in the US and is estimated to be worth around $150 million. This is a shark named uh -huh. Mark. Oh, nice. <laughs> we got him by his tail. <laughs> yeah. Take that, Mark Cuban. <laughs>